let me yeah. let me let me ask you this. Let me ask both of you guys this so we can just get some education for people because people might not be familiar. So, all right. So we talked about um, earnings. Mm. Can we break this down a little bit? Because people might hear about earnings and the earnings were good. The, only, the earnings were disappointing. And then if the earnings don't are disappointing and the stock drops, but talk about like, what does that actually mean when they release, when they release their quarterly, quarterly numbers? Yeah. So basically what I just ran down is the revenue generators for a company. So Apple, we talked about the iPhone. We talked about the services, right? That's another revenue generator, the MacBook, the iPad, um, I didn't even do wearables. I, you know, the wearable numbers, they, I didn't even yeah. put those in there, but I could have. So everything that is a revenue generator goes into what the company earns. Wall Street will say, based on its performance, they'll say, all right, well, we estimate that they should make this much per this quarter, mm-hmm. these three months. It's, a, it's an estimate, right? At, mm-hmm. at best, it's an estimate. Now, if they hit the estimate, great. And sometimes we see the stock go up. So you have firms like JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley analysts, right. that put out, Reports. Yeah, they'll put out. They'll pull out. Where do you uh, think it will go? Yeah. Right. Up, they'll upgrade. It depends. They'll say overweight or underperform, and based on those things, people will say, "All right, it's a good time to invest," or "It's not a good time to invest." Also, what Apple didn't do. Again, we spoke about this in a few episodes ago. And they didn't offer guidance, and so when we right. talked about guidance, is the future outlook. What does the yeah. next quarter, the next two or three quarters look like? And so they haven't offered any guidance during the entire pandemic. So this isn't anything new. So the stock did pull back a little bit. What is guidance? I just said the future outlook of yeah, of yeah the, the, f- the future like, outlook of what they expect to do. So for my rap fans, the analysts are like academics when he's guessing like what the first week numbers <laughs> are going to be, and the estimates are like first week sales before the quarter. Now I, I truly think they should do earnings on a one year basis. It's a huge mistake when companies run on a quarter to quarter projection and it's a rat race that they're chasing, but they missed the number. But the numbers and the growth of the company were great with a supply chip shortage. Exactly. So I wouldn't sell based off of that. And I, when you guys are looking at what to invest in, you always want to do the versus of the stock. So if you did Apple versus Ford, GM, whoever you would pick, you have to say, are they better across the board? The answer is usually no. If it's not, then you have to pass it up. But yeah, with the earnings, it's a projection of what they are going to do. And a lot of times if they miss, the stock will drop and then it's a good buy at that point. And I even seen stocks that have hit their numbers and tanked because of it. So that's why I never lean on earnings and I never factored mm-hmm. into my investment equation because it's not a game for us to play base off of that. And for those of you to trade off of it, if you yeah. get the direction wrong, you're going to get killed. So I, that's why I never factored into my investment. Yeah, we, we, we just, we just saw snap drop like 20% after its earnings. Like, they missed yep. and it dropped 20 percent. But we've yep. seen Apple have a hundred billion dollar quarter and pull back after that. Right. Mm-hmm. They, the revenues are running so high. Um, and so yeah. that I mean, again, if you base your, stra- your investment strategy off that, you ha- have some real, real experience in doing it. You shouldn't do it. I'm going to just say what he wants to say uh, to your price <laughs> of Apple 238.02. That's the target I have it getting to. So you guys can write that down. 238.02 is where I expect Apple to get. And Snap did take a hell of a tumble. It will recover, but they have a lot of competition. I have an interesting theory about Snap, but I don't want to go into it. But if uh, Apple goes to 129.76, that's why you guys should look to pick some shares up. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you heard it. Let me, can I, I'm going to do one more company that missed because it was like big news that go ahead. obviously, so Apple misses, Microsoft takes advantage of that. They become the wealthiest company in the world, but Amazon missed. And everybody knows I've been huge about Amazon made a hefty investment in Amazon. And so they missed their quarter. Obviously supply chain issues had a lot to do with that, but same thing with Apple. We know what quarter they're going into, right? The holiday season is upon us. Now, this today on CNBC, the president, the CEO of the National Retail Federation uh, put out a statement. He said that this holiday season is on pace, right? They're expecting it to be the greatest shopping season ever of all time. Right. Mm-hmm. They're expecting an increase of growth of over eight to 10 percent from 2020 when everybody was pretty much home. And so if we think about e-commerce, who's the number one in that space? Yep. That good company. Right. Amazon. But also some, uh, there was there was a, another piece of news that came out about Amazon. Uh, maybe people overlooked it, but they have uh, entered uh, the the EV market. Right. And we spoke about Rivian a few maybe last year, uh, but it's, it's an That's electric well pickup too. truck. Well yeah. played. They own 20. So the numbers finally came out that they own 20 percent of the company. So they own 20 percent of Rivian. 
Uh, I think the investment was like 1.3 billion, right? Based on Vivian's evaluation, because it's IPO in this month. I don't, we don't have the exact date. I know in the next couple of weeks it's going to IPO. But based on evaluation, that investment is now worth 3.8 billion, right? So the growth of Rivian will also mean the success of Amazon as well. They've already ordered 100,000 vehicles for their delivery mm -hmm. service. And there's another company that has been invested in as well, you may have heard of by Ford. Ford owes 5% of Rivian as well. So the base mm -hmm. has been laid for this company to be successful. Amazon's already owns 20%, plus they've already had 100,000 vehicles. How long did it take a Tesla to get to 100,000 vehicles ordered? Think about that, right? And so when you start looking tough, at the yeah. success of this EV market, they've already built in a win. So you, so what are you saying? You're bullish on Amazon? Is I'm staying bullish on Amazon. You, gotta, you, speak, you have speak, to. You got to speak the language that you, you People just want, Saudi just want to know, am I buying it or not? That's I all speak, you want to know. I just want to give you the information speak, so you make the I right speak, decision I, I for speak, yourself. I speak for the masses, man. They just want to, they and just keep want, they want that microwave. That's yeah. It. So Amazon is an amazing company. Hold it for the next 10 years. Um, I know you guys are going to ask about Rivian, but it's one of the things you have to understand when big companies like these, and they own a, consi a considerable amount of it, 20%, that is a solid strategy in business owners. When I'm telling you to diversify, because we're not talking about it enough, but we've entered an age where we're watching the job market die right in front of our face. And part of the reason why crypto and EV is going up, they're not saying it. These are going to replace most job markets. And when they usher in universal basic income, they're going to say, well, we gave you guys the opportunity to invest in crypto and Amazon and Tesla when they were super cheap. So when I'm saying you have to invest in these because in 15 years, there may be no job market the way we see it today. If you don't believe that's true, go talk to your aunts, friends, brothers that lived through 2005. And when 2007 came, the job market dramatically changed. I remember when we were graduating from school, it was like, if you graduated, you were guaranteed a job. Now I know people that have masters that can't get a job that pays 80,000 a year. Please be mindful. We are witnessing a changing of the guard in real time. UBI, universal basic income. You 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 think that that's something that you just kind of breezed over very quickly. Um, you believe that that could actually happen at some point in time? If the job market continues to be eroded, absolutely. Oh, they got him in the matrix. That's our connection. I don't know. No, I'm still good. Ian Dunlap has froze. <laughs> they have him in the matrix. Um, okay. Well, while we wait for Ian to come back online, let's talk about uh XLY since we talk oh. XLY. <laughs> so <laughs> XLY, since we're talking about um Oh, there you go. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Always. Oh, yeah, right. I'm, right. I'm good. All, all right. right. So, all right. Yeah. So you said um, if if the job market continues to suffer, then some level of universal income will have to. It, it's going to be needed we'll to, to keep the people from revolting. Hmm. You have to. You have to. Um, I don't think people go look at historically. Go look in 1929 and 1933 after those recessions happened. How much you guys can Google it. How much the job market declined the power of the dollar is going down my biggest fear and i've said it before um vitalik came through peter Thiel's fellowship he made ethereum you guys i've already told you my theory on bitcoin if we get taken off of the petrodollar and the saudis no longer have to buy oil that is the last linchpin that we need for america to have no advantage inflation will go through the roof there's a reason why you're seeing square tesla all these companies look to hedge with crypto in case the world falls apart. Please write this down. The ultimate investing strategy is to be able to make money no matter what happens in the world. So whether we go to World War III or hyperinflation or we lose our dominant spot, you still have to be able to produce, make money because like Rashad said before, we have expenses every single day. So when you guys are like battling over which assets to own, should I do options long-term? The answer is to do all and then invest in the top ones, and then you, you'll be safe. But in order to keep the people from having an absolute riot, in maybe 15, 20 years, they may have to do universal basic income. 
for sure. Interesting. That's interesting. We'll monitor that. Um, one one thing I wanted to talk about. You said that uh, it's going to be the biggest retail um, season ever. So XLY consumer discretionary ETF that could see some positive um, results. Yeah, we're seeing it run right now. We saw it run obviously because and we said shout out to Ty. Ty gave me the exact number was sixteen nine point percent allocation to Tesla, but the number one allocation in XLY's ETF is is Amazon at twenty two percent. Yeah, and so. Again, if I'm bullish on Amazon, the company itself, of course, I'm going to be bullish on the ETF that has a large allocation of it. Plus, it has Tesla in it. Those two companies alone, outside of anything else that's in there, that's almost 40 percent, almost 40 percent of the entire ETF. I mean, if you're buying stuff online and for everyone watching, it's a good question to ask. If you're buying stuff online and you don't use Amazon, what's the better alternative? Shopify is in stock club. It's not better. What do you use on walmart.com? UPS Etsy. isn't great. Etsy is okay. Wish, disaster. If you want the young jock Halloween mask, you could have went on Wish. Oh, Always think like, who is the best at what they do? This is why I hang my hat on being the best, best at investing. They're showing you in real time, media, who's the best. You have to hang your hat on those that are at best in the world at what they do. And that's an easy formula. And even if you go back to the 1980s, if you're looking at steel, oil, um, 1960s with Ford, that formula works for every single era. Like who is the best at crypto? If you're looking at in terms of holding value or store value, it's Bitcoin. If it's ability to create projects, you can argue Ethereum. Please write that down. The number one in the space is always the best one to invest in. And, and that's what that's one of the reasons why I really love ETFs is because it's like like so take XLY, twenty two percent is in Amazon, fifteen percent is in Tesla. Um, so let's just talk about that right quick. A lot of people don't like Tesla because they feel like it's too volatile and it's very risky, um, and it's at an all time high and it's you know it's kind of overinflated. Some people might think so. This is why you know you can invest in the ETF and you actually get Tesla exposure without actually investing. And then Amazon's another one where people think like, well, that's you know, up there in price and I might not have enough money to buy one share mm -hmm. and it's not going to make a difference because I don't have enough money. So now, you know, the ETF, once again, gives you exposure, almost a quarter of your portfolio to Amazon without actually, you know, putting $3,000 to Amazon stock. But then also in, in that ETF it has Home Depot, yep. McDonald's, yeah, Nike, winner, Lowe, winner. Star, Starbucks, <laughs> Target. Winner, Target. So, winner. you know, it's, it's a lot of, um, <laughs> It's a lot of good companies in there. And yeah, if people, consumer discretion, people start to spend money. Um, all of those companies are going to get patronized. McDonald's, say what you want about them. The greatest not going retail out of business. company of all time on a real estate side. Yeah. Easy, easily. They're not going out of business, <laughs> no matter what. Home Depot's not going anywhere, y'all. <laughs> Nike, Lowe's. People don't, don't think about Lowe's enough. We talk about real estate, shout out to Matt. We talk about real estate all the time. Lowe's is like the cornerstone for all of these real estate guys, all of the developers yeah. and all that. They have, they spend thousands of dollars on Lowe's. Man, I tell my dad all the time, you need nothing else but Home Depot, Lowe's, Apple, Microsoft. For those, cause like people in construction, you guys prop up. And th this is what I love to do. I was in Galleria last week. I went to Apple to buy some wired headphones cause I lo lost my AirPods, right? I'm like, how many sales you guys? It's 11 o'clock. He was like, they did 2,900 sales by 11 a.m. When you guys are in there buying, drywall and sheetrock you guys can see the volume in there yep. so you yeah. guys have accounts you know infrastructure is never going to go away and major cities people are still going to build just invest in in quality across the board and even better with the volatility thing con ed volatility is higher for my people back at home nipsco prices for heating is higher like the rate of return that you're going to get is going to be offset by the volatility. So the more return that you want. So if you want something that grows 150% in a year, it may be a chance that you get a 25% drawdown. But a quality company that is best in its class is not going to draw down 100%. You're not going to lose. Even if you bought the absolute top, it's not going to go from top to bottom and you get wiped out. You have yeah. to stop worrying about volatility and quality companies and realize those are the places in which you should be buying the most so like when tesla was in the 620 range and i told you guys it was going to come down it surpassed every estimate and then shot up now it's at 1154 but look you would have doubled your money pretty much from june had you just listened 
my graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs>